Hello everyone, my name is TJ Simmons. I'm a support specialist for our developer products team here at Esri. Today I'm going to discuss troubleshooting tasks with the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. Before we begin, here's an overview of what we are going to cover. First, we will answer the question, what are tasks? Then we will take a look at some common issues encountered and how to identify and address them. Finally, we will provide some additional resources that you can use when you are troubleshooting tasks. What are tasks? Tasks are classes in the ArcGIS API for JavaScript that allow you to interact with operations of the ArcGIS REST services. All tasks are asynchronous since they make HTTP requests to REST services. They return a promise that resolves with what is returned by the service operation. Tasks have a URL property that references the service the task will run against and methods used to run the task. There are a variety of service types that the task classes can work with. Those services include geoprocessing services, geocoding services, routing services, map and feature services, as well as image services. Tasks each have support classes that are involved in any task workflow. There are two general types of support classes. The first is task parameters. The task parameter class is an object that is passed into the task execute method. It defines all the parameters that are to be used by the service that is executing the task. The second supporting class is the task results. The task results is what is returned when the task has been completed. The result class provides us with properties and data types that a particular task returns. This gives us an expectation of how to use the results when we get them. The typical task workflow follows a similar pattern. The task gets created when the URL to the service gets assigned. Then the parameters are specified. After this, the task gets executed and once executed, the results are returned or an error and the app will use the results for its purpose. With this pattern in mind, there are three areas where issues tend to occur. Issues with the service, issues with the input parameters, and issues with the results. In the next section, we will take a look at some of the common issues and troubleshooting techniques we can use for each. Issues with the service. When using tasks, you can often encounter issues accessing the service the task is attempting to use. There are a number of different service issues that can lead to these results. Service not found. The service not found error is typically due to an invalid URL. It can also be returned if the service is not accessible to the network the client is on. For example, when an ArcGIS server is not accessible to the internet. Unauthorized or token required. This issue occurs when a service in question is secured and the application or user does not have authorization. These issues can be addressed by updating the sharing settings or modifying the app to handle authentication. Cores or cross-origin resource sharing. There are a number of cores issues that can occur for a variety of reasons. A common reason is the server of a given resource is not cores enabled. There are a few frequently occurring cores errors, such as no cores header present, multiple cores header values, the origin does not match the value, or cannot use an asterisk with credentials. Service not started. The service the task is trying to use is not running. This means the service has been stopped on the ArcGIS server and needs to be turned back on. Finally, timeout errors. Timeouts can be caused by network or other issues with the service itself. Let's take a look at a demo to see how we can find that one of these issues is occurring. This application is running a print task. Here we construct the print task and set the URL property to the URL of the print service. Here we create a print template, which is set as the template property of the printing parameters along with the view. The print task then executes, passing the printing parameters and returning a print result. Let's go ahead and execute the print task. We have an error returned. 
Let's open the developer tools to see if we can find what is causing the issue. You can open the developer tools by navigating the menu using F12 or Control shift i When troubleshooting issues with the service, we can use the console and network tabs. Here in the console, we see a message, Service Utilities Custom Printing Tools GP Server Not Found. Let's take a look at the network tab. The network tab shows you all of the traffic that the application makes. Here is a request to the GP server to return information about the service in JSON. We can see it has a status of 200. And when we look at the response body, we can see that error code 500, service utilities, custom GP tools, GP server not found. Uh, if we double click on this link, we can take a look at the service in a new tab. We see the same message again. Let's back up to the utilities folder Custom Printing Tools was the wrong name of the service, but we can use the Printing Tools instead. Let's grab the URL here and update the URL of the print task. Let's execute the task again. This time we get a result. Let's take another look at the developer tools. We can scroll down to find the new request to the GP server. Here we see it contains all the information for the service and a subsequent execute request was made when we executed the print task. Errors for each of these service-related issues can be found in the console and network tabs. Problems with parameters. When encountering problems with parameters, there are two common types of issues that occur. Errors that prevent the task from completing, this usually produces an unable to complete operation error, and errors that do not stop the task, but cause the results to be incorrect. A couple of good techniques to use when troubleshooting parameters include Testing from the REST endpoint of the service. If the ArcGIS server service directory is enabled, you can run the operations of any of these tasks outside of your application. One good technique is to take the parameters from the request the application makes when executing the task and testing them at the REST endpoint. When troubleshooting tasks that have many parameters, reducing the number of parameters can help eliminate variables or reveal the issue as they are removed. Let's take a look at a demo. This application is using service area task to solve the service area of a facility with one, three, and five minute drive times. Here we construct the service area task and set the URL. We then create the service area parameters, setting the facility, default breaks, and output spatial reference. The service area task is then run using the solve method, passing the service area parameters. Let's go ahead and run the task. We can see that a graphic was created, but there is no service area. Let's take a look at the developer tools to see what's going on. In the console, we can see a message, unable to complete operations. We can expand this to take a look at the details. Zero locations in facilities are valid. Need at least one valid location, insufficient number of valid locations in facilities. Let's open the network tab. Here we can see the request for solve service area. Because it is a get request, all of the parameters are listed here in the URL. We can expand this to take a look at them. As we can see, there is no parameter here for facility or facilities. If we double click on this link, we can open it in a new tab. In the URL, we can find the format parameter, f equals JSON, and change it from JSON to HTML. This allows us to see the UI of the REST endpoint of the service. Here we can see that the parameter is facilities rather than facility. Let's uh, go back to the code and make that change. Let's run the code again. This time we have a service area returned. 
but it's only one service area when, and we are expecting service areas for one, three, and five minute drive times. Let's take a look at the developer tools again. We can scroll through the traffic to find the next solve service area request. Here it is. This time we see that the facilities parameter has a geometry. And when we take a look at the default breaks, there is only one value rather than one, three, and five. Let's take a look at the documentation to see what we can find. Here's the documentation for service area parameters. Let's go to the properties and scroll down until we find default breaks. Here we can see the default breaks are looking for an array of numbers to be returned rather than a string. Let's make that change in the code. And run the code again. This time we get the expected result. To recap this demo, we encountered two issues with the input parameters. The first was related to an invalid parameter name, and the second to an incorrect data type. One prevented the operation from completing, while the other returned an incorrect result. Troubleshooting results. Once issues with the service and parameter have been dealt with, we can still encounter problems when trying to use the results. Issues with the results can vary depending on what the results are being used for, but some typical issues that can occur are type errors. These can occur if the result is not the expected type for the property or method that uses it. And reference errors. These errors can occur if the result is being used before the promise is completed. Lastly, a good troubleshooting technique is to console log the results. It allows you to see if the results exist as well as provide you with information regarding the properties and values present. Let's take a look at a demo. This demo is executing a query task and then rendering the results in a graphics layer. The query task is pointing to a feature service URL. The query parameters are created in this query object. It will return the geometries, all attribute fields, as well as any earthquake with a magnitude of eight or greater. The query task will then execute passing in the parameters and will return the results. The result of a query task is a feature set. The features property is an array of graphics. Here we add a symbol to each of the graphics in the array and then add the result to the graphics layer using the add many method. However, the application is not displaying any graphics. Let's open the developer tools. The console contains an uncaught reference error. Query result is not defined. Looking back at the code, we can see that this error is because the result is trying to be added to the graphics layer before the promise has completed. Let's move this back up into the callback function. And run the application again. This time we can see the results of the query task are visible in the application. In the developer tools, I've console logged each of the features returned by the query task. This can be a useful technique when troubleshooting the results of a task, as it enables you to see the, what properties are present and what values they have. For example, we can open up the attributes to view all of the attribute data that was returned by the query, as well as see the geometries, or the symbology that was used. And finally, here are some additional resources that you can use when troubleshooting tasks in the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. Below are links to the API reference pages for the JavaScript and REST APIs. Thank you for your time and have a good rest of your day.